Yeah. Thank you. May I see more people on video, please? Okay. So we are going to be talking about a concept uh, around leadership, authentic leadership. And I'm sure you would have heard about this concept a number of times. Um, and before we dive into the session, let me quickly introduce myself. And I will also ask you to keep in mind how you want to introduce yourself. I would want to hear from you an adjective that resonates with the authentic self for yourself, yeah? So if you were to describe your authentic self with one adjective, what would that be? And then you proceed with your introduction. So a little bit about me, I am Shanti Sharma. Uh, for those who are uh, in India, you would know that uh, the places I'm going to be talking about are are very different in culture. So I am a Tamilian, born in Nagpur, brought up in Delhi, married into a Rajasthani Sharma, and that's why my name Sharma comes. I've been a learning and development professional throughout my career, 27 plus years out of which 26 has been in hardcore LND. Uh, on a personal front, I've done the 100 kilometer walk twice, and I also have delivered sessions at the Leonard Cheshire Institute for Disabled People to help them become employable. These are not underprivileged people who haven't had the opportunity to complete their education, um, but this is sort of a finishing school to help them get equipped with either using computers, preparing for their interview, writing emails, basic skills that they would need in as they work, uh, as they're deciding to work in corporates. Uh, I'm a certified learning and development manager. I'm a professional certified coach. I'm an NLP professional, and I am currently in training for transactional analysis uh, in the uh, organizational development uh, space. This is my second year. Hope to continue it uh, till I become certified. Uh, I would also like to talk about a program that I'll be running. Uh, I call it Empower. I know this is only specific to women. Uh, in Bangalore, so I know, Vincent, you are going to be left out. <laughs> I know the other day you wanted to join the lean-in session also. That was also only for women, but yeah, uh, this is only for women. It's a two-day residential program in Bangalore that I run, uh, and people who are attending today's workshop do get a 20% discount. I've put the details in the text chat. Uh, feel free to register. If this workshop or the theme of the uh, Empower program interests you, Post the workshop, I can stay on to talk to you more about the workshop, but for now, let us get going. Before we look at what are we going to cover today, I am going to stop sharing and I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself one by one. I don't, I don't need to specify any order, feel free to, um, any which way you want to start. I'll start. Sure. I'm Pooja. I work as a brand partner at Agarwal Estates. Mm -hmm. I uh, The company is in Bangalore, but I work from Assam, Guwahati, which is my hometown. I've recently joined uh, Agarwal Estates and the MD there is also my uncle. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I heard a lot of uh, good things about Miss Shanti and uh, her uh, webinars and everything. So this, this is my first time joining one and I'm looking forward to it. Welcome, Pooja. Pooja, your adjective that describes your authentic self, what would that be? Um, I would say down to earth. Down to earth. Thank you. Who's next? Right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Vincent and... The adjective that I've, I have for myself is fun. I am based out based out in Gantok, and I run a learning and development firm called Advantage Learn. We focus more on life skills. So I guess uh, Shanti and me, uh, I've worked with Shanti previously. Um, I've, she's a mentor to me, and anything that Shanti does, I think it always motivates me, and, and that's the reason why you know she mentioned about me trying to join the Empower Her program. That's where it comes from. But yeah, it's always good to be. We'll get an that. empower him too soon. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Who's next? I could go. 
Um, hi, everyone. My name is Saumya Shashidharan, and I'm from Bangalore. Uh, I started off my career in training and development, worked for good 10 years, and then I moved into a different operational uh, team to get the leadership experience. And uh, this is one of the links that was shared by my friend through LinkedIn. And I really wanted to be in that workshop uh, that could help me you know, focus on the leadership side of it. So that's why I'm here. And uh, the objective for my name is I'm spontaneous, be it personally or work-wise. I'm quite spontaneous. I don't need a heads up. I can just bounce quickly in. Um, I hope sometimes that is a good part but sometimes I also see that as a you know con for me so yeah that's about me thanks everyone thank you so much hi there I'll go next my name is Sheila I'm in uh, New Brunswick Canada and I'm a training business partner for Bioscript Solutions I've been in training for probably about 20 years and my objective really is just uh always to kind of keep learning. I, I came across this course on LinkedIn as well, and I thought it would be uh, an interesting one to pop in and see what I can learn. Welcome, Sheila. Thank you. Aishwarya Arundhati. So should I go in first? Yes, please. Yeah, sure, sure. You. Thank you. So I'm Geeta, uh, and the adjective word I would like to uh, share uh, about myself is adventurous. So I, I do a lot of things, but I'm not talking about adventures externally outside. It's more in my mind and uh, in my you know skills, what I do. So I'm basically from Bombay. Uh, now, since last 10 years, I'm in Pune. Mm -hmm. I am now uh, a life coach and uh, a strategic advisor as I set up a company in Pune and I worked there as a co-founder and director for eight years and then I started my uh, another journey uh, you know doing NLP where I have done my practitioner masters and training so yeah I do all these three things uh, as a strategic advisor as a life coach as an NLP trainer and uh, yeah, I'm very happy to be here. I saw this link on the Shi Mantras group. So that's huh? how I joined. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Arundhati. Uh, so basically, I, uh, if I'm to talk about myself professionally, I am uh, around 15 years of experience in IT. And uh, I am into leadership role for almost uh, eight years now. Mm -hmm. I am an agile coach. I am an agile enthusiast. Uh, I've worked on various programs. I have also worked as uh, a program manager. Now, basically, I am a delivery manager for a team of around 200 uh, people uh, mm -hmm. spread across uh, various locations. Majorly, I have team in Pune, Chennai, Bangalore, and Mumbai. I am based out of Mumbai. I work with uh, Tata Consultancy Services for almost a decade now. Before sure. that, I've, I've worked with Honeywell and I've also worked with uh, Ajos Intel. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much it about my professional journey. And the uh, objective that I want to give to myself is uh, enthusiastic and uh, uh, cheerful. So Awesome. I hope I'm the last. Uh, hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Myself, I I'm just trying to sit in a place and get most of the light. So, yeah, so um, I'm having about 18 years of experience. Um, I was working with uh, different organizations, majorly uh, Dell Technologies and Salesforce. Currently, I'm on a break. And uh, I got to know about this uh, program after attending Shanti session the other day uh, through Lean In. Ah, okay. Lovely, lovely. Anyone we are missing? Yes, Kavya. Yes, hi, hi. This is Kavya. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm an accounting and uh, finance professional. I uh, have over 10 years of experience. My last experience being with uh, ENY. Uh, I've taken a break for some time. I'm looking for opportunities. I want to get back. And I did see this uh, webinar on women's network. We have a women's network group. So mm -hmm. I'm re really curious and my adjective is curious. Curious, oh, I've been very practical about things in life. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you, Shanti. 
Curious Kavya. Anyone else? Hi all, uh, I'm Vaishnavi. I'm a learning and development professional, 11 years of experience, uh, worked in various capacities such as soft skills trainer, life skills facilitator, assistant professor and content writer. Uh, I am also an active Toastmaster. Uh, gives me immense satisfaction to you know, develop people's potential and to help them tap into their strengths. And uh, one adjective uh, to describe my authentic self would be individualistic, because I consider myself unconventionally traditional. And whenever I think of myself, I somehow find uh, to be a bizarre blend of different things. So yeah, individualistic Vaishnavi, that would be the Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Rahma. Um, I'm people and culture professionally. Uh, mm -hmm. For the last 12 years, I've been working in the interior uh, organizations. I'm now based in Somalia. Um, <clears throat> the adjective that I would give myself is selfless. Um, Lovely. Yeah, for the sake of the nature of my work, uh, I always see myself, uh, you know, giving more to the people other than myself. Um, I've been following uh, Shanti's topics and other cultural related topics, leadership related topics in, on LinkedIn. And uh, when I have seen this topic, I really liked it and uh, wanted to join. Welcome, Rama. Thank you. Um, I am Vaishnavi. I am, I've just started my career as a content developer at Google Satori. And uh, the adjective that I would relate myself most to would be patience, because I believe in listening and understanding before responding. And I also uh, don't rush through coming to a solution. Rather, if I have a challenging situation, I think and then I respond. I'm patient throughout. The, throughout. So I think I would say that I'm patience would be my adjective. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Deepti, welcome. May I request you to introduce yourself with an adjective that signifies your true authentic self? What would that be? Uh, hi, Shanti. Sorry, I was a little late in joining. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, so one adjective that would uh, really define who I am is active listening. Uh, that I think is super important and a lot of times I see that uh, people are so easy to jump to conclusions they don't even let us finish the sentences what we're talking and so I feel it's important in any conversation to be active listening allow the other person to really finish the sentence and put the full stop before we jump to conclusions very true very true thank you Deep. So with that, let's look at what is it that we are going to cover through today's session. While authentic leadership is a growing area of academic research and lots of curiosity around what is authenticity, what do leaders do when they show up as an authentic leader has been around for the last decade or so. But the concept itself is not new. I mean, we can trace back authentic leaders to ancient Greek philosophers who stressed a lot on authenticity. In fact, the term authenticity also uh, comes from a Greek word that is ostentatious, which means uh, doing with your own hands, very real, not, not artificial. Uh, so with that, what we are going to be doing for uh, a little over an hour today is what is authenticity? What does an authentic leader mean? Who is an authentic leader? what constitutes an authentic leader, and of course, what are the components. Finally, we will look at how all of this is theory, but then how do I bring that into practice into my day-to-day -day life, and how can I show up as an authentic leader in my day-to-day -day leadership? That's what we are going to look at. To start with, I'd like to hear a definition of authenticity from each one of you, and I'm going to put a Mentimeter link in the text chat. If you can... Uh, you can either scan, if you have a phone, you can scan, or uh, I'm going to share a link in the text chat if I'm able to get to the Zoom window correctly. Uh, wait, sometimes I have to stop sharing to be able to do anything else. 
will show chat, yes. Here is the Mentimeter link. May I request you to please um, respond to uh, the question, what does authenticity mean to you? being true to oneself, Lead by example, visionary, honest, dedicated. Genuine, honest about the situation. Honesty is coming up in multiple places. Realistic, faithful, transparent. Loving those adje adjectives, simple, purposeful can be trusted 100%, somebody you can trust. Lovely words, people, keep, keep them coming in uh, while we move to the next slide. So there are, of course, there is the traditional definition of authenticity, which is uh, one's relationship with oneself owing to personal experiences, be it thoughts, emotions, needs, wants, preferences, beliefs, processes captured by injunction to oneself. To me, that was a very heavy and complicated definition. So I looked out for a simpler version. Can I have a simpler version, which is, which is authentic? Yeah, that was the idea. To me, is authenticity is demonstrated when one, when one acts in accordance to their true self, express themselves in a way that is consistent with their inner thought and feeling. That means there is coherence between what they are thinking, what they are saying, and what they are feeling. If there is a disconnect, it shows up as unauthentic. It does not show up as coherent and there is no connectivity. That, to me, is a definition that really struck a chord with me. That's why I put it up. So if this is authenticity, if I may ask you, how does an authentic leader show up? Anybody can unmute and share. Uh, what do they think and how do they think an authentic leader shows up? Walk the talk. Authentic leaders walk the talk. Lovely. What else? They think on realistic grounds. Tell me more, realistic grounds meaning? The current scenarios and how can they, how, uh, they can act perfectly on it. What's the best solutions? They futuristic look for approach. Best solution, they look for futuristic, they, they keep the future in mind. What yes. else? And probably they are the one uh, whom uh, the team or people can uh, go to when they are in trouble or when they really uh, have challenging situations. Yeah, yeah, they are yeah. go-to people in most situations. What makes them the go-to people? Keep that question in mind. We will come to it a little later. But any other responses in terms of how does an authentic leader show up? They are I think it's also daring and trustworthy. They are daring yet trustworthy. Lovely, lovely. Um, I think it's also about uh, the one who takes... Sorry, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, I heard part of one, part of one, realistic something, and then there was something. So both of you will have to repeat. Yeah, that was me. So I said that they set realistic goals. They set realistic goals. And Samia, what were you saying? Just to add to whatever was commented now, I think one of the best qualities of this authentic leader could be that they can take the accountability of their team, no matter what. Take accountability of their team. Lovely, lovely. Great points, people. Let me share my screen again. 
and let's continue. So they are deeply aware of how they think and behave, so there is no disconnect. They are perceived by others as being aware of their own values and morals. So they are very, you will not find them, you know, uh, saying that I, I prefer an honest person, but they are being dishonest. They will not say I prefer being unbiased, but they are their actions demonstrate by. So you will not see a disconnect between what they think, what they say, what they think, what they comment on in terms of their values, models, perspectives, knowledge, behaviors, et cetera, that and how they demonstrate it in their actions is going to look very, very, uh, uh, will match. Uh, they are aware of the context in which they operate and that's why, that's what makes them trustworthy. That's what makes them realistic. That's what makes them present in the here and now. They are not talking up in the air. They are not, uh, they are curious, but they're not, overly imaginative to an extent that it pushes their ideas, dreams to uh, an unreal state. So they're very real uh, in terms of what they have to think and say. Last but not the least, they do show up as very confident, hopeful, optimistic, resilient, and people of very high moral character. So if you see most of these chances are you are looking at an authentic leader and speaking to him or her. With that, if we have to talk about what are the characteristics of an authentic leader, there'll be lots of it that you can you can find in so many other places. And you know, little uh, characteristics of certain leader, you can actually read up about the characteristics for hours together and still you will not end. But we're going to pick one model and try and bring all the concepts together to work through that model. First one, they are true to themselves, which means they will, rather than faking their leadership style, authentic leaders are, uh, you know, they will conform to the expectations. They will conform to their own expectations. They will conform to others' expectations. So you are, so they are very predictable. You, you can expect something out of them and they will not be too many deviations. That's the first, first thing. They're, why they're trustworthy is because they are pretty predictable. Second, they are, motivated by personal conviction. What that means is these leaders, uh, rather than looking at status, honor, badges of honor, credibility, all of that, they are looking at personal connects. They will work with personal connects and emotion to build that bond and trust. They are originals and not copies. I don't think I have to talk more about this. Uh, authentic leaders, they have their own brand. They have their own personality. You will not say this person behaves like this person. Or when I look at this leader, they remind me of somebody else. Those thoughts will not invariably come to you because they are who they are. They are very authentic and genuine. Last but not the least, they display actions and behaviors that are based on their personal values and conviction. Now we put all of this together into some form of a structure and say, four things constitute authentic leadership, the components of authentic leadership. The first one is self-awareness. We will look at it in detail. That's why I'm rushing through the slide. Uh, relational transparency, balanced processing, and uh, internalized moral perspective. We look at each of these, and also probably I'll share an example of each of these where uh, uh, this makes more sense to you. you. You can bring this to life. Let's first look at self-awareness. What does the term self-awareness mean to all of you? Probably understanding your values, understanding your personality um, yeah. would be part of self-awareness. Absolutely. What else is part of self-awareness? It's, it's more about knowing yourself. Knowing yourself well, yes. Knowing yourself and the environment you're in. Thank you for adding that, Kavya. Typically, when we say a leader is self-aware, they should be familiar both with how they view themselves and also how they're being viewed by others. More importantly, how is what they are doing, how they are behaving is affecting the people around them. Is it affecting them in a positive way? It is affecting them in a negative way. So it's an ongoing self-awareness can be built through this ongoing process of 
reflection, re-examination, again, reflection, re-examination, doing, changing, tweaking, something in the way you show up, in the way you want to present yourself. Eventually, you will find that balance where you don't have to struggle to be yourself. It comes to you naturally. And what you say about yourself and what others say about you is pretty much matching. That is self-awareness. In simple terms, uh, when leaders are able to, uh, if a leader goes and asks around the team, how, tell me two adjectives about myself and they list about five, six adjectives for themselves and those adjectives are similar. Chances are the leader is very self-aware. Here, I would like to talk about one of my coaching clients um, who for multiple sessions, he used to keep bringing up problems with his team members, a team member who does not do tasks uh, the way they've committed to either on time or whatever quality was expected. Another team member would uh, always have some sort of a personal issue and this, this leader was always struggling. Um, when I started seeing a pattern that the leader, there is not even a single team member out of a team member of four, the leader was not comfortable in working with even one team member. Uh, that's the observation I made saying that you seem to have some sort of an issue with each of your team members is my observation, right? And the leader was taken aback and said, indeed, I don't think I work well with the team members. So we started looking at what could be wrong. And he said, I do everything for my team members. I'm so supportive. I answer all their queries. I'm always available. I still don't know why I'm not getting the kind of support I'm get, I should be getting from my team. So we said, you know, you feel, I said, you know, you feel you are supportive. You are giving them all the time they need. You are supporting them in every way they are asking you to support. But do they also feel the same? He said, why would they not? He said, okay, let's do this test. Do you want to take this as your homework and come back before we meet next to just speak to your team members and see what they have to say about you? Uh, two days later, he pinged me and said, Shanti, nobody's responding. I don't know what to do. So we quickly had a phone call and said, you know, do you want to make it anonymous? Maybe they are hesitant to tell you something. Do you want to make it anonymous and see how this goes? He made the feedback anonymous and he did get feedback which was definitely not his own view about himself. And he was so startled as he showed that feedback to me on his screen. He was almost in tears saying that, this is not what I thought I am. I'm not sure how people are getting this idea. So that definitely was a leader who was not self-aware and it can create so many differences between how you're trying to lead and what the way you think you're trying to lead and how others are receiving your leadership. Of course, he worked on it and he, the things improved and changed and uh, he's a very happy leader now. The second one is relational transparency. Any idea what could relational transparency mean? There are two words, relational and transparency. That should give you some idea. Open communication. Open, how, how, tell me more about how you're relating relational transparency to open communication. Uh, with respect to others, while communicating with others, trying to be as open as possible, sharing without withholding information. Lovely, that's the catchphrase, without withholding information without withholding feelings, without withholding thoughts. Yes, as a leader, there are instances where you are advised, you know, please pass on this information. We are the leadership, the management will tell you certain additional piece of information and say, this is not to be communicated to the team. You can communicate this part of the messaging, but not this part. How do you show up as authentic when you are hiding something from your team members? It is important for you to acknowledge that I'm finding it difficult. I know a little bit more, but not all of it can be shared. And there is genuine interest in your favor why this is not being shared. It will be shared as and when things take shape and will make sense to you. So basically, relational transparency means maintaining transparency in a relationship. 
openly sharing by the leader their own thoughts and beliefs. Having clear motives for every action is very important um, as you're trying to build relational transparency. Um, it also means expressing your emotions, but does not mean you, uh, um, you become emotional, you start crying or you start uh, exaggerating or you know, literally getting sucked into your emotion or blurting out things that you should not be doing. Rather, expressing that I'm feeling angry at what I'm hearing, I'm feeling sad at what I'm hearing, yet to be able to contain your emotions and express what you're feeling and carry on with the conversation. It's a very delicate, what do you say, fine line between saying what you're feeling and actually demonstrating what you're feeling. Yeah, If you're angry and you start throwing things, banging your table, red eyes, wide eyes, uh, an angry face, angry emotions, loud gestures, immediately you will create a barrier. The relationship between you and the recipient of the message, you're going to create a barrier and a distance between them. However, you can actually say, I'm very angry at what I'm hearing and continue with your message saying, why am I angry? What can be done so that both of us do not walk out of the room feeling angry and upset or hurt or whatever. So that that being able to maintain that Transparency in a relationship is part of what an authentic leader should be doing. The next one is uh, balanced processing. Uh, balanced, I think, is a term that all of us understand. Uh, the term processing uh, is the one that, that actually adds meaning to the, the statement of balanced processing. Basically, when you're processing anything, be it an idea, be it a set of thoughts, be it when you're creating some strategy, uh, you're creating anything that you're building and creating, the idea is you take input from the entire team, either creating the whole work product all by yourself or by selectively taking in people to contribute ideas uh, does not demonstrate balanced processing. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are people who are far more equipped than others to offer ideas. They have subject matter expertise and hence they are more equipped to offer ideas. Uh, they have more experience, they've been there, they've done that and that makes them more qualified to offer ideas. But as an authentic leader, it is your responsibility to ensure every person in the room has been given an opportunity to voice their ideas, thoughts, values, beliefs, fears, whatever it be. Whether you include that in your final work product or not is up to you. That is your leadership. Uh, and how you convince them as to why uh, certain ideas were selected versus the others were not. That is your ability to communicate. But as a leader, if you fail to get ideas, inputs, thoughts from everybody in the room, everybody in your team, you have failed to demonstrate balanced processing. And hence, chances are half of your team is going to feel you are biased. You are partial towards certain team members. You favor certain team members. So it's important that you demonstrate balanced processing. Last one, I won't spend too much time on this. I think the name itself, um, um, tells you what to expect is internalized moral perspective. You can't have leaders who say something and do something else. It is important that the leader stands by certain ethical values and live up to it. Um, one example that um, comes to my mind is um, um, this leader who had, uh, who, who was making some procurement decisions and one of the vendors that had submitted the RFP was a well-known acquaintance <clears throat> and uh, the problem statement he had brought into the coaching conversation was um, he is very good I know him personally I want to give him the deal but I'm bound by my organizational ethical uh, grounds that I have to do an evaluation but um, I'm worried that I may be biased because I know this person, what should I do? The thought that he was so self-aware that just by knowing this person, the vendor who is an acquaintance, he may tend to be biased. He wanted to figure out ways in which uh, that uh, 
you know, just knowing the person does not color his decisions. He does not take any unethical decisions by hiring this vendor. Uh, he wanted to make his decision-making process foolproof. That itself demonstrated to me that uh, she's an authentic leader and really wants to, you know, uh, think through how she's making decisions. So very clearly, congruence in your thought, in your behaviors and actions leads to authenticity. You can't look different and say things differently while you're feeling something differently inside. Any thoughts or questions so far? I assume none. So now wonderful, we understand what does, what makes up an authentic leader, but now how do I start to practice becoming an authentic leader? Before we uh, uh, open up what's there on the slide, any thoughts anyone has, what can you do to become a more authentic leader? I just have a couple of thoughts. Maybe if it, I mean, uh, I'll give my example. I'm going to take over a new team. So I'm just thinking while you were like talking about the authentic leadership that I think knowing about the team, having the self-awareness and trying to understand what your strengths and weaknesses are to embed with the team would probably help, you know, one cope up and start building into the journey of being an authentic leader. Lovely, Soumya. So make a list of your strengths and weaknesses. Ask your team, even the, if, the, if the team that you are going to be leading now is a very new team, they may not have enough to tell you. Maybe go and check the past teams that you have led. Your peers are a wonderful mirror. Yeah, you can ask your peers, give me three strengths and three development areas mm -hmm. and see is there coherence between what they are saying and what you have written for yourself. That's a lovely way to become more self-aware uh, and work towards becoming an authentic leader. What else can be done? <clears throat> I think if you are working with somebody that you really feel already is an authentic leader, then you know look to them as a mentor, work with them, see what you can learn from them. Absolutely, have role models, have mentors who can who can who can be that mirror who can be that sounding board and tell you that doesn't sound authentic that doesn't sound you when you say that when you do that it doesn't feel you what's happening yeah who are who have the courage to uh, tell you that uh, things don't seem authentic those will be the right kind of mentors to choose lovely what else i think you also need to be confident uh at a level that your 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 actions and your values read each other, so that uh, you believe what you do, or you you do what you believe. Let me say that you you do what you believe. So be confident on showing your true beliefs. Lovely. Yeah. Be aware of what you stand for, what your values are, what is important to you. <clears throat> Sometimes a situation may arise wherein we may feel. Everything seems to be important. Yeah, honesty important, integrity important, being a friend important, being a good manager important. But you can't keep everything as important. There has to be, you know, a gradation. This is most important. This is the next. This is the next. This is the next. Mm -hmm. If at all I have to let go, probably these bottom three I'm going to let go. So being aware of what is most important, important, least important to you in your things of everything is important is very critical. If you don't have something that will help you guide, help you make decisions, and chances are your head is going to be very cluttered. You are not going to be decisive because everything in that point in time seems important. We're going to do a couple of case studies where, you know, you will see where uh, keeping people happy seems important, keeping your manager seems important, keeping yourself healthy and sane important, then what do you focus on? 
Yeah, so knowing what is important to you, your values is important. Anything else, people? Okay, let's see what we have on the slides. First one is rethink your leadership image. Um, what this, this basically talks about is have learn more about yourself and figure out, you know, you, you said, you know, can we have a mentor? Look at who is best qualified to be your mentor and that gives you a basis of the kind of leader you want to show up as. With that in mind, consider where you are right now versus where you need to be. That gives you that gap in your image. Work towards building that leadership brand that you are proud of. You don't have to put in too much of an effort to be that leader at all points in time. If you have to be always on guard, wanting to project yourself as a good leader, that is not sustainable. You have to be very comfortable, very natural in your own leadership style. That's when you will show up as authentic. Otherwise, there will be, you know, you can find leaders who have great scripts, great, you know, written messages that they will read out of, rattle, such beautiful speeches. They sound very authentic because they've rehearsed it that many more times. But when it comes to question and answers, they will fumble. When it comes to challenge, they will fumble. Why? Because they're trying to project themselves to be something different, somebody different. And that is not sustainable. Somewhere you will give away that you're not being your authentic self. So rethink what is the image that you want to project as and practice consciously, deliberately practice being that person. Second, I think all of you shared is increase your self-awareness. Uh, not only what your values, likes, dislikes are, but also from others' perspective. Do others see you demonstrating that value? Do others see, uh, you know, coherence between what you say your value is uh, and how you behave? This might sound simple, but we have often overlook clarifying this with our team members and peers saying that, you know, you said I'm not, uh, I'm not, um, hmm, I don't complete my tasks on time. Now, where did this stem from? In my head, I may be thinking I'm a very you know, time conscious person. If, if something starts at two, I, I will be there at two. Something ends at three, I will leave at three. But the other person is not seeing it like that. There is something behind what they're seeing. Can we figure out what that is? Definitely assess and evaluate. You have to uh, once your values, likes, dislikes, and weaknesses, et cetera, are established, you can now understand how aligned your behaviors are to your values and ethics. Assess what you have already given up. Be clear on what's most important to you and what you will not give up at any cost. Yeah, that probably, you know, if you can, if you're writing notes or something, at any cost, you would want to bold, underline, italicize that because that's the importance. It can't, your values can't change depending on the situation. If your values are changing as the scenario, as the circumstances are changing, maybe that's not a true value. So keep assessing, evaluating what at a certain point in time is important to you. 10 years ago, definitely our values would have been different. Today, if you are evaluating again, your values are going to look different. From 10 years from now, you start this evaluation process all over again. You might not find any of the values that are important to you relevant then. Things do change, but be mindful that at any point in time, your being and your doing, they have to match. If they are not matching, there is a problem. My slides don't seem to support. <clears throat> Yeah, take action and get support. Like we said, you know, do we need mentors? Do we need people with whom we can bounce off ideas? Uh, if I have crafted an action plan, do I need an accountability partner who is going to hold me accountable for things I have done, I have not done? Why have I not done? Give me the right kind of support. So it's very important that a genuine leader has mentors, coaches, um, has, you know, sounding boards, peers that they can just talk to who can be very true and honest. So there is a reciprocation of that authenticity in that relationship. Last but not the least, work on uh, 
becoming an effective communicator. It is very important that if you can't communicate your ideas and thoughts effectively, chances are that people won't see through your message to who you authentically are. So I'm not talking about you need to have great grammar, great vocabulary, great voice modulation. No, it is about how you convey that message. Your grammar could be wrong. Your, you, you may not have a great voice to communicate. You may not have a great personality and charisma to communicate. Yet, if your message is authentic, it will get across and touch the chord in the other person that you are seeing. Simple. Do we all know now how to become an authentic leader? Yes. Lovely. Can we practice now? Yes. Right. Excellent. So how are we going to practice? So I'm going to put you all in three breakout rooms. I will have three case studies. Um, and I can also tell you who is in which room so that you can take a snapshot of the uh, case study to discuss in your room. The case studies, prima facie, sound very simple. So my first question is, of course, what are you going to do? Uh, and you will be able to immediately tell me what you're going to do, because that's not the tough question. The question two and three are going to be where you need to apply your brains. Uh, so the action will be very, very evident that in, in, in a given scenario, this is how an authentic leader will act. But now what I want you to do also do is think of all the possible outcomes because of your action. Yeah, some will be favorable actions, outcomes, some will be not favorable outcomes. I want you to list out all possible outcomes and how are you going to handle any of the unfavorable ones for sure. Sometimes even the favorable ones, you may have to do some bit of situation handling. How are you going to manage that? So basically, how are you going to show up as an authentic leader? Authentic leader is not just about being authentic and deciding something and letting everything flow. It is also about managing what the ripple effect is. It is also about managing what happens after you've showed up as an authentic leader. Yeah. So that's what we are going to be doing. Each room will get about 10 minutes as you're doing. So please, in your discussions, identify who from your room is going to be the representative. Come back and present back the findings and answer these three questions for the rest of us, yeah? Let me put you into breakout rooms and tell you who is in which room and then I will also show you the scenarios. We want three breakout rooms. I'm going to stop sharing for a minute so that I can see the rooms clearly. Uh, room one is Aishwarya. Deekshita, Rahma, and Vaishnavi Prasad. Room two is Geeta, Pooja, Sheila, and Vincent. Room three is Arundhati, Kavya, and Soumya. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen again, show you the three scenarios. If you can please take a screenshot and uh, then I will open the breakout room. So this is case study one which is Aishwarya, Deekshita, Rahma, and Vaishnavi Prasad. If you can take a screenshot and once you're back, you can answer the three questions for this scenario. Room two, this is case study two, Geeta, Pooja, Sheila, and Vincent. And room number three, Arundhati, Kavya, and Soumya. This is case study three for you. Are we all good? May I open the rooms now? Yes. Yeah, I think. Yes. Yes. Lovely. Opening the rooms now. I will message you when you're about five minutes, halfway through, two minutes in the last minute.
Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi Shanti. I could not join the room. I suddenly got some visitors. So I had to get out. No worries. Should I move you into the room? They have about three minutes left in the discussion. I don't think I, it's you know any point for me to join at this time. They must have already started. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yes, so stay on. We'll bring them back in about two and a half, three minutes. Yeah. So uh, for how long is the session continued? Uh, it'll wrap. We'll wrap up by four thirty. Okay, great. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. I'll keep logged in. I'll just be sure. back in five minutes. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. This makes sense. Yeah, Vincent. Uh, Shanti, uh, we just uh, we lost the track of the questions that you had. Mm -hmm. I can't see it now. Could you share that with us once again? Yes, I'm pasting it again in the chat here. Sure, fine. Uh, thanks so much, Shanti. We were uh, looking for that. Thank you. Back. Welcome back, Arundhati. Hey, hi, Shanti. Hi. Shanti, just just a quick question. So those cases which were given to us were, uh, uh, so we had to just write like the questions that were given, right? Or there were there are just the just the decision and you know whatever the case study was was. Yeah. Created. So what would you do? What would be the various possible outcomes? And how would mm. you handle each of the different possible outcomes? Okay. And 10 seconds, everybody should be back and then we'll continue. Welcome back, welcome, welcome back. How was the discussion? Good, really nice. <laughs> Good, yeah. We're just trying to see how we could, how could we be as authentic as possible. 
the answers do seem very in the face. It's like, oh, this is so easy. Why is she even asking? But hopefully through the discussions, you'll get more clear as to the answers that seem so straightforward indeed are not. Yeah, can we have representatives from group one to talk through what they discussed? Yeah, group one, uh, I think uh, we had four of us, Rahma, uh, Dikshita, and uh, Aishwarya. Aishwarya and Aishwarya, right. So uh, case study is in front of us. Uh, the company is struggling and there has to be a layoff. As a manager, we have the power to choose the employees to retain and let go. and. Uh, we have a personal relationship with one of the employees who's at the risk of losing the job and is not the most qualified. So the, uh, how do we make a decision? Uh, everyone unanimously agree that we'd go with what is best suitable for the organization, considering yeah. that the organization is struggling uh, in terms of uh, finance and the best possible outcome is to keep those who would be the, the most optimal resource for the organization. That was the uh, unanimous decision. Looking at the alternatives that are available, number one, uh, to let go of the uh, employee who's at a risk of losing the job because that person is not the most qualified. What could be the possible outcome? There might be, uh, what could be the outcome because of this action taken? The question mm -hmm. number three, I'd like to continue with that before moving on to the other alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so-called other person might really not uh, feel good about it and uh, it might there might be some sort of a you know relationship uh, issue which might pop up yeah so it's, but I think over a period of time considering that the person knows me quite well they understand the rationale behind the decisions so that will definitely be uh, that can be fixed that is uh, the first alternative the second alternative is uh, there's a catch that we all noticed here. It only says that the person is not the most qualified and we don't know much about the person's performance. So if the person is a good performer, uh, I don't think qualification should really come into the picture in this particular case. So as a manager, uh, now that I have the ability to choose the person whom I can, uh, I think I can always you know, uh, put forth my views to my seniors and tell them that hey, why not uh, continue with this person, assuming that the person is quite good at their job. And the outcome is everything goes fine. Uh, if you know the seniors also accept the proposal. Third alternative is uh, to help the person explore other opportunities, either within the organization or outside the organization, because the person is not the most qualified for that particular position. Maybe uh, give them alternative options where they might fit in better. And by doing this, uh, you know, I'd be doing justice both to the role as a manager and to my personal relationship. So yeah, these were the three outcomes and this is what we discussed. And uh, uh, Aishwarya mentioned, also mentioned uh, uh, beautifully about how we could be an empathetic leader while we could help uh, the other person explore various opportunities and also see if that person can upskill to suit that particular position. This was the outcome of our discussion. Wonderful room number one, a big round of applause. So very evidently you will um, keep the interest of the organization in mind before the interest of your acquaintance. Yeah, that's a very clear given. Um, with that in mind, you want to uh, study further whether that qualification um, uh, really impacts performance. If it doesn't, can the person still continue? Yeah. Uh, the other thing is if the, or help the person find another internal external position, but either ways, if you have to let them go, trust that with time, they will understand your perspective. And while you're being empathetic and trying to give them logic and rationale behind why this decision, you hope that they may be upset to start with, but they will understand your perspective and eventually you'll, you'll be able to build that relationship back again. Th that is the summary if I had to call out. <clears throat> if you look at um, 
the, uh, the the first thing that you mentioned, and probably it's not only to you, to your entire room, if I have to ask, yeah. Uh, if the person is not qualified, but an amazing performer, but you still have to let go one person and the others in your team are also amazing performers. How will you decide? So it's 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 choosing out of six bright red juicy sweet apples. You have to let go one. Which one? Uh, Aishwarya, I think you were mentioning about the critical resource. Would you like to add in? Yeah. So what I was uh, saying is. Not just the performance, like it might be a contribution of a lot of factors, uh, consistency in the performance and uh, cost, right? Uh, to maintain that performance, what is required, what is the minimum, or it, it, even, even if he is above and beyond and maintaining him in a long run is going to cost uh, more. Mm. then there can be a decision to let him go if there are accepted performances available from other resources. So that is another factor. Lovely just example, Aishwarya, that they may all be performing at the same level, but if the organization is already in a crunch and is having to lay off people, should you be also looking at the maintenance cost, which is a more expensive resource to do the same job versus another less expensive resource who's also doing the same job with the same efficacy. Yeah, then yes. retain the one with uh, that is less expensive and probably you'll have to let go. Possibly it is this your acquaintance. Possibly it is not your acquaintance. So both of these are possibilities. Lovely. Any other? If, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. One more thing is even if you're, a kid, you're having a personal relationship, performance is one. And then other is a relationship with other stakeholders, even if he or she is a high performing employee, how is their relationship with other stakeholders, right? Is there high maintenance in terms of, you know, covering the damages in terms of relationships? Again, that is also a concern. So Very there are a lot of factors coming into picture. Yeah, looking at a holistic set of factors that are required for effectively performing that role sometimes it, if it's a sales and marketing kind of a position, maybe that person needs to be well networked. Looking at who has the best network might be more important. Uh, if it is a very creative uh, kind of a role, yes, everybody has been performing well, but who has the potential to continuously create and generate newer things uh, might be your uh, one of your criteria. So looking at all the criteria, not just qualification, definitely not the fact that he or she is your acquaintance uh, is important. And keeping the organizational interest in mind is foremost. And it is not easy. It is not as easy as we made it out to be in the breakout. Like the first instance, all of us said, yes, this is what we are going to do. In real life, these decisions are very difficult. It is very difficult knowing that you're going to have lunch with the same person for the next two months before they are relieved is going to be very difficult. The, to realize the fact that you're going to be accompanying each other in the transport to and from office is going to be so difficult. Um, so these are, they sound easy, but what I wanted to reiterate is, uh, they are not as easy to take, but we need to keep a holistic view as we are deciding. Thank you, room number one. Room number two. Who is going to represent room number yeah. two? Yeah. So our case uh, was basically uh, about a discussion with a client wherein the client requests us to manipulate the results to uh, make their product look successful. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question to us was, whether we would go ahead and take the unethical route and do that or or not. So mm -hmm. uh, all, all of us came to the conclusion that it would uh, be better to not go to the unethical route and uh, of course uh, make a decision based on uh, like what exactly, how the product is performing and accordingly uh, work on the project and not uh, try to make it look more successful than it actually is. Yeah. Uh, the outcome for this would uh, definitely be shown in the longer run wherein uh, uh, we'll have more credibility on the 
brand itself the uh, customers will be more loyal they know that they, we are authentic and we are true to our words uh, which is why uh, there will be more trust for the brand as well as uh, in the long run because of this uh, trust in the brand and loyalty there would be more profits mm -hmm. uh, which uh, would not have been possible probably if we had taken the unethical route uh, the results in the short run probably would have been better it uh, might look more successful to the people in the shorter run but uh, slowly when uh, you know people try the products and experience the products first and they will realize that it's not actually how it is and that will only damage the credibility of the brand yeah. so we wouldn't be going to that route and uh, another thing that is also important is that having an honest conversation with the client itself asking them telling them how this would, uh, this will damage the brand and um, you know, trying to make them realize how wrong it is to go down that path would uh, also help in building a better relation with the client itself. Yeah. So, But what if the client says, okay, if you can't change it to how I want, then probably we can't work together. Well, I think that's okay. If, if you're a, a business and you're you know, you are an authentic business. I think you're, they're valid to their opinion, their opinion, and, and they're also valid to ask you those questions. But I think if you're an honest and authentic team and, and those kinds of things, I think you just stand by your word and say, you know what, it's okay. Sometimes we have to let certain business go because it doesn't stand with our, our vision. Absolutely. They may, if, if if they make such a statement that if you can't do what I'm asking you to, maybe we'll have to end the project. We can't work together uh, uh, for more time. Uh, chances are they'll keep bringing these issues more often. Yeah. If you are already having resistance towards being ethical, chances are you won't be able to work long because your value systems are so different. So it's probably healthier to just let go that client. If the client is willing to understand and and you know, work with your values that are really important to you, probably it's going to be a long-standing relationship. Lovely. Kudos room number two. Any other thoughts on what 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 anything else that could possibly happen? If the results are not going to harm anyone, mm -hmm. like manipulated results are not uh, you know, going to harm those who are going to look at it and uh, buy it. I think there's no, uh, there's nothing that wrong in trying to do it to some extent, especially in this case where the, uh, I'm just a team member. I'm not in a position where I can make a decision, like uh, leaving, letting the client go might not be in my hands because the last line says that your team needs the project to be successful for future business. Hmm. Here I'm just one among many. So, yeah. It has to be a collective decision. Perspective. Yeah. What yeah. can we work with? What can we not work with? Um, chances are that if, if that manipulation is made and you make the product look more fabulous than it actually is, uh, chances are when you put it out in the market, the reality would come out. In which case the client is going to wash their hands off and say, you created the product, yeah? Now you bear the brunt of not, it not performing well, yeah? In, in case, how are you safeguarding? Can the client take the ownership of this manipulation? Wherein you say, not my cup of tea. I can't manipulate, not my values. Whatever you want to communicate with, and that is your understanding. You want to do it. And there are lots of these possibilities, but it's important that you do not give in. Even if you're not the decision maker, Make a collective decision. And in that collective decision, there are chances that if you have five people in a team and four of them want to, uh, like Vashnavi, you said, you know, it's okay, let's keep this business. We are all in bad need of money. Let's go with it. And you feel that's not right. Uh, sometimes you might have to go with the flow if you need to retain your job. You can continue voicing your concerns. But if you're not the decision maker, uh, Keep raising an alarm. This is not right. This is not happening. This is not ethical. This is not according to our company values. This is not aligned to our purpose. What, Whatever justification you may have, it's important that you keep voicing and keep voicing it in the right forums. 
If the team is not hearing, is there a skip level? Is there HR? Is there somebody in the organization who looks into these matters and then is able to help you course correct? The chances absolutely are there that the team isn't willing to let go while you are wanting to stay the right path. Yeah. Room number three. Oh, I see somebody dropped. I'm not sure who. Room number three, you just have Kavya and Soumya. I'm hoping you are able to represent your team. Yes, um, I think um, Arundhati had most of the notes, but yeah, um, I can just briefly as to what we discussed. So in this case, it looks like the first supplier is providing a pretty good, um, you know, a reasonable discount. But we 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 decided that we would go for the second supplier who promises to give a better quality product and it seems to be a reliable product. And then the reasons why we want to approach this decision is basically um, a better quality is, um, you know, will give us more customers, not just more customers, but better uh, customer satisfaction rate, trust and reliable reliability uh, mainly. So I think those were the pretty good reasons why we felt like even though the earlier supplier were giving us discount, we felt like, you know, quality is something that we need to overlook and, um, you know, take a decision based on, you know, the quality that we can promise to the customers. Yeah. And what all could be the repercussions? Um, yes, we will lose out the relationship with the earlier supplier, like what Sheila was saying. It's it's absolutely fine because it's that, uh, you know, it is better for the organization in the long run. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll have to lose business exactly how the second, you know, team represented. It's fine to lose business over quality because quality is something that will help us run the business for a longer time than compromising on the factors related to, you know, less financial, you know, um, things so that's that th those are some of the things and plus i also feel like you know uh although we may lose the supplier there could also be a little bit of reputation that could be hampered as well but again you know for us the quality would speak much better is what we felt yeah any discussions around talking to the supplier one and saying yeah this is our quality standard can you give it to us can you service us at this quality um, we didn't kind of get uh, deep into the discussions, yeah, did, but yeah. then, uh, but that's a great point. I mean, uh, giving a feedback to the first supplier is always good is because sometimes they may not understand the standards uh, of the quality that we want to work towards. So giving a feedback and maybe that particular supply can give us that particular quality uh, that we are expecting could also be, you know, a kind of a turnaround there. So I think that's a great point. Yeah, so sometimes we feel um, that just going with our values, just going with what is right, maybe the very obvious answer, but it is also important to have that open communication. Yeah, that authentic communication and say, this is what I want. Can you deliver this or not? If you can't, then we can't work together. If you can, let's talk about the discounts. You know, having that very transparent communication might also be important. Any other thoughts, anything else that can possibly happen because of your decision? Um, just a thought, like, you know, I was in the training and development team, right? So I used to work with these vendors. There was one situation that I had gone through pretty similar to this one. And it all, it's also about your own company's preferring about that particular supplier. So it's also about giving the justification, making your own team or your company know as to why you choose this decision would make a lot of sense because sometimes you have uh, internal, internal customers or internal team members who are much more favorable to the supplier that have been supplying for a long time. So a shift to a new supplier will cost uh, all of these, um, you know, changes. So I think addressing it to your own company. Yeah. Why yeah. ruffle feathers when everything is going so smoothly? We've been working with the supplier for years. Why do you want to change anything? So you may get pushback from within your organization. So you need to be mindful of how will I manage that? What will I communicate? How will I convince them? How will I show them the importance of retaining quality over uh, discounts? You know, how will I help them do that comparison and then work towards the decision that is uh, 
uh, acceptable to the entire organization. Absolutely. Thank you. Big round of applause to all three rooms. Thank you so much, people. With that, we do come to the end of the session. And you can use the same Mentimeter link. I'm going to move to the next slide, Bill, uh, for you to quickly answer what is it that um, I have no clue why this doesn't move. Yeah. What were your key takeaways? Would love to see what your responses are and open to feedback, thoughts, questions, suggestions, anything that you would like to share. Shanti, is the link available on the chat box? It is. If you can't see, let me know. I will paste it again in the chat box. I can't see it either. Okay. Yeah, I cannot see it as must have gone because of the breakout rooms, just pasting it there either way. Yeah. Being true to yourself, authentic no matter what, genuine, true to yourself, the truthfulness or accuracy of something. Thank you, people. Um, comes in its own difficulties, but it's how we handle. Very lovely, very lovely. Good refresher, thank you. <coughs> Truly appreciate, truly appreciate all the responses. Uh, feel free to log off if you've got any questions with regards to the workshop itself, to the workshop Empower residential one that I mentioned. I'll hang around and answer all your questions. Uh, but if, if we are done, feel free to log off. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shanti. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Shanti. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Shanti. It was a lovely discussion. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kavya. Uh, will you be giving us material or recording on this? So I will share the recording with all registered participants and I'll share a PDF version of the pack I used. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you.